Hello everyone, welcome back to Systems Craft by Keshav, your go-to channel for all things related to software development, system design, AIML, and many more exciting stuff. I'm Keshav Peswani, and I'm here to help you become the best version of yourself in the world of technology. Over here, it's all about empowering developers like you to grow in your careers and stay up to date with the latest technologies in the market. Whether it's mastering new programming paradigms, diving deep into the system design principles, distributed systems or databases, or exploring the wonders of artificial intelligence and machine learning, it's all here. So today, we are delving into a fascinating comparison between Spring Webflux and Java Virtual Threads introduced recently in Java 21. It's a showdown between the two cutting edge approaches to performance and concurrency optimization. So get ready as we unravel the mysteries behind these technologies and see how they stack up against each other in a real world stress test. You would be surprised as to what you find and we'll see that. So let's get started right away. The Spring Web Flux is a part of Spring framework designed around the reactive programming paradigm. What it means is that unlike the traditional synchronous processing, this reactive programming paradigm actually helps you to make it more non-blocking and asynchronous streams of data. What it means or translates for us is that our application can handle more traffic, the application can handle more traffic with less resource consumption. When I say resource, what I mean is both the CPU as well as the memory. What are the advantage of it is that it it improves as we know the scalability of the application. As it can handle more traffic with less resource. And since it can do it, your resources like CPU and memory are efficiently utilized and since it works on the reactive programming paradigm it also provides you with functional programming scope this offers you a rich toolkit for working with the data streams when I say streams, it's like continuous flow of data, which includes the transformations on this data, at an asynchronous level. So let's try to understand how this happens. So one of the core features of the reacting programming is its threading model and this is quite different from the traditional thread per request model which is used in the synchronous web frameworks. So in the traditional model whenever a new request comes there is a new thread that gets created. What I mean is that there are requests coming in and there is this container and for each request that comes in there is a thread that gets spawned up and it goes to the request handler which further goes to the downstream like db or a third party service so for request one there would be thread one and this thread one for request two there would be again a new thread being spun up and this is like thread two doing the work 
what this would result is into a scalability issue when we are dealing with the high volume of data because as the requests increase the threads will also increase and since these threads are blocking threads because they will wait for the downstream calls to complete there is a lot of context switching happening and lot of cpu resources being consumed and this becomes the entire bottleneck now in the webflux part of it what it does is that it uses a non blocking event driven model what happens in this is we have an small pick size thread pool which we call the event loop workers or the event queue and these workers actually give the request to the event loop which makes the request to the downstream systems which is your db or your third party service and with a call back now once this downstream service completes the work the call back is returned back to the event loop with with operation being completed so this can be either success or failure that doesn't matter and this event loop processes the call back so the incoming request comes over here this is my event loop like the queue for the event loop this event loop is picked up from here called the downstream services with a call back once the operation gets completed it goes to the back to the event loop and which again processes the call backs and sends the response back what it results is that these tasks or the requests are handled or executed in a non blocking manner and which allows these other threads or the remaining threads to process the rest of the remaining requests but there are certain disadvantages while using the reactive paradigm so the one the foremost one is the learning curve the reactive paradigm if you see in the spring web flux for uh, world it's quite tricky to understand and especially for those who are accustomed to the imperative style of programming along with this as we saw that the work is done in an asynchronous manner it's quite hard to debug any issue or a bug in the system because everything is in async manner so the flow becomes hard to understand and this is what actually becomes quite a disadvantage since each and every developer now needs to understand the functional style of programming and the debugging of it so now that we understand what is a web flux or the reactive paradigm and what are its advantages and disadvantages and how it processes the request in a non blocking manner let's try to understand what are the virtual threads that are introduced recently in the java 21 world so these virtual threads which are currently now being called as the game changer for the concurrent programming it's unlike the traditional os threads which are very heavy and are limited by the os these virtual threads are very lightweight 
and are managed by JVM. So the traditional threads were managed by OS and heavy. But now the virtual threads are managed by the JVM. What it results is that you can spin a lot of maybe thousands of threads without even worrying about the overhead. So you don't have to worry about the overhead, which was the case in the OS threads, wherein you had to see the overhead of context switching. What it means is that in the, in the traditional OS threads, as we saw earlier, that whenever a request comes, you actually have an OS thread being spun up and this OS thread does the work and sends the response back. What it translates is that since let's say we have an 8 core machine with 16 threads, now at most there would be 16 threads that would be working. Now if one of the thread is calling a downstream service, it would result that this thread is in the waiting state and CPU cycles are wasted. But with the introduction of the virtual threads, what happens is that whenever a request comes in, the JVM would actually spin up a virtual thread. And this virtual thread would do the work and send back the response. Now this seems as similar to the traditional model only. But what is the difference over here? So let's try to see this with an example. What happens is that in the virtual thread, since as we saw, we can spin thousands and millions of virtual thread. If it is doing some work and it's in the block state, so let's say this virtual thread is in the block state. And so we have four virtual threads, one, two, three, four, and one of them is in the block state. And we have only two OS cores for me. So this is OS thread one and OS thread two. The other three can still utilize it. So this one can be mapped over here and VT2 can utilize this. Supposedly the VT2 still goes and becomes in the block state. Maybe it's calling a DB. Now, since this is in the block state, what JVM would do is that it will reduce this thing and maybe align VT3 to this particular part. Now VT1 will execute and VT3 would execute. So hence JVM will take up the responsibility of efficiently handling the OS or CPU. And this results that the CPU cycles are not being wasted. Now the advantages of using this virtual thread is First of all, it's simple. There is minimal code, code change needed from the traditional OS threads. And we'll see this in the example, how simple it can be. It's like just a one liner code change. And with this simplicity, you also get the performance. With JVM actually handling the scheduling, the virtual threads can actually improve on the throughput and the latency decreases. But with these advantages, which are very major by the way, 
there are certain disadvantages as well with the virtual threads the first and the foremost being the resource management since jvm handles the scheduling of these threads they still consume resources but if you have poor resource management they would lead to performance issues and the second one which i think can be solved eventually is the tooling and support since there are very new the tooling and the support is still relatively evolving so the second part of it which is the tooling and support i feel that this can be solved eventually the major one or the major disadvantage that i see is the resource management which means that jvm constantly needs to improve its scheduling and the resource management of the virtual threads